Welcome to Saving Castles, the podcast for castle and chateau enthusiasts. Join us as we explore the fascinating history, stories and culture of these awe-inspiring structures, from the legends and folklore to the latest in restoration. We'll cover it all, so whether you're a seasoned castle aficionado or just discovering the magic of these magnificent buildings, this is the podcast for you. So grab your headphones and let's dive in. Our journey begins in the waning days of medieval England, in the county of Surrey, where the elegant edifice of Hampton Court Palace first came into existence. This grand building, a marvel of red brick and elaborately fashioned chimneys, is steeped in centuries of royal history, intrigue and architectural evolution. More than just a physical structure, it is a tapestry of England's past, spun from the threads of those who have walked its hallowed halls. The seed of Hampton Court Palace was first sown in the mind of Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, the son of a butcher who rose through the ranks to become one of the most influential figures during the reign of King Henry VIII. His magnificent home was designed to reflect his lofty status, and no expense was spared in its creation. Completed in 1525, the palace was an architectural marvel of its time. It housed over a thousand people, among them the finest craftsmen, cooks and servants, all serving the cardinal's grand vision. But, as the saying goes, uneasy lies the head that wears a crown, or, in this case, the cardinal's hat. Wolsey fell out of favour with King Henry VIII, primarily due to his failure to secure the annulment of the king's marriage to Catherine of Aragon. In a desperate bid to regain his standing, Wolsey gifted his beloved palace to the king. So, in 1529, Hampton Court Palace changed hands, marking the beginning of a new chapter in its story. King Henry was a monarch of great ambition and extravagance, and he sought to make Hampton Court Palace a symbol of his power and prestige. Over the next decade, the palace was extensively enlarged and enhanced. Its grounds swelled to cover sixty acres, and it boasted luxuries such as a tennis court, bowling alley, and a hunting mark. The King's Great Hall, a true gem of English architecture, could seat over six hundred people for lavish feasts. Yet, despite its grandeur, the palace was also a place of intimate royal dramas, from the birth of Henry's long-awaited male heir to the clandestine meetings with his many wives. Over the centuries, Hampton Court Palace has played host to countless monarchs, each leaving their indelible mark on its fabric. It has witnessed the golden age of Elizabeth I and the dramatic shifts of the Stuart and Hanoverian dynasties. It has seen tragedy and joy, secrecy and celebration, births and deaths. Its walls echo with the whispers of England's past, each room a story, each corridor a chronicle. This series will delve into these tales, unfolding the palace's rich narrative layer by layer. We will step back into the time of King Henry VIII, exploring the grandeur of his court life and the dramatic events that unfolded within the palace's rooms. We will tread the path of spectral queens down the haunted hallways and marvel at the grandeur of the royal chapel and the great hall. Our journey will take us through the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, the changing tides of dynasties, the exquisite gardens, and the preservation efforts of the modern era. Along the way, we will uncover personal stories and anecdotes that bring history to life in a unique way, humanizing the historical figures associated with the palace. Hampton Court Palace, an architectural tapestry of history, a living testament to England's past. This grand edifice invites us to step into its halls, to listen to the whispers of bygone eras and to keep the stories alive for future generations. In 1529, the keys of Hampton Court Palace were placed into the eager hands of one of the most famed monarchs of English history, King Henry VIII. This moment was a watershed, signalling a significant shift not only in the ownership of the palace, but also in its destiny. The royal majesty and personal dramas of Henry's reign were etched into the very bricks and mortar of the palace, giving it a singular historical identity that endures to this day. 
With an appetite for grandeur equaled only by his hunger for power, King Henry immediately set about transforming his new residence into a befitting symbol of royal prestige. Under his watch, the palace underwent massive expansion, adding new suites of state apartments, kitchens, and a majestic great hall, a magnificent embodiment of Tudor architecture with its high hammer-beamed ceiling and dazzling stained glass. His modifications also included creating an elaborate network of covered galleries and enclosed courtyards to ensure privacy. Within this sprawl of bricks and chimneys, the king's rule resonated powerfully and shaped the course of English history. The Hampton Court Palace, under King Henry, was a hive of activity and hub of cultural and political life. It was here that he made significant decisions, held diplomatic meetings with foreign envoys, and entertained on a grand scale. It was a stage upon which the drama of Henry's life and reign was enacted, his multiple marriages, his break with the Church of Rome, the birth of his much-awaited male heir, Edward. Every stone of the palace bears silent witness to these seismic events. One of the most profound historical events that unfolded within these walls was Henry's marriage to his sixth and final wife, Catherine Parr, in the palace's ornate Holy Day closet. This union, while not as controversial or tumultuous as some of his previous marriages, nonetheless marked a significant chapter in the king's life and a period of relative stability during his later years. In the grounds of Hampton Court Palace, the king pursued his love for hunting and jousting. The verdant acres provided ample space for his sporting endeavours, adding yet another layer to the narrative of the palace. The sounds of revelry, clashing swords, and the trumpeting of hunts fill the air, underscoring the palace's vital role in the king's private and public life. In the king's kitchens, a veritable army of cooks prepared sumptuous banquets, reflecting not only the king's famed appetite, but also the importance of food in royal propaganda. The grand feasts served in the magnificent setting of the Great Hall were occasions for the king to display his wealth and power, bolstering his image as a benevolent and majestic ruler. In his private apartments, another side of the king was revealed, a man of intellect and curiosity. These chambers saw him engrossed in matters of state, poring over manuscripts, holding clandestine meetings, and perhaps even indulging his love for music and astronomy. The blend of grandeur and intimacy in these apartments makes them an intriguing part of the palace's narrative, a testament to the complex character of Henry VIII. The tenure of Hampton Court Palace under King Henry was a time of radiant glory, punctuated by personal dramas and political upheavals. The echoes of his rule still resonate within the walls of the palace, and its architecture and design bear the indelible mark of his personality and reign. The narrative of Hampton Court Palace during this period is, in essence, the narrative of Henry himself, a grand and elaborate tale of power, ambition, and human foibles. When twilight descends upon Hampton Court Palace and the sun's final rays play upon its red brick facade, an ethereal hush settles. As the day's bustle subsides, it is said that spectral figures rise to roam its vast rooms and endless corridors, casting whispers of centuries past into the cool night air. These spectral tales add a chilling dimension to the palace's historical narrative, intertwining fact and folklore into a haunting tapestry of the supernatural. Perhaps the most infamous ghost said to inhabit the palace is that of Catherine Howard, the fifth and ill-fated wife of King Henry. A young woman condemned for alleged adultery, Catherine was arrested at Hampton Court Palace and reportedly broke free from her guards, running down what is now known as the Haunted Gallery, pleading for mercy from her unsuspecting husband. Her pleas fell on deaf ears, and Catherine was executed at the Tower of London in 1542. Ever since, her terrified ghostly figure has been reported dashing down the gallery, her screams echoing through the hall as she forever relives her desperate bid for mercy. Adding to the spectral symphony, the ethereal figure of Jane Seymour, Henry's third wife, has also been reported at the palace, dying tragically 
After childbirth, Jane is said to appear in the silver stick gallery, holding a lighted taper. Clad in a white robe, she is said to walk across clock court each year on the anniversary of her son, Edward's birth. Such spectral sightings seem to symbolize Jane's unfulfilled role as a mother, tragically cut short by her untimely demise. Interestingly, it's not just the infamous who are remembered in these spectral tales. The Grey Lady, known in life as Sybil Penn, was a devoted nursemaid to Elizabeth I and Edward VI. Her spirit, according to tales, began to haunt the palace after her tomb was disturbed during the 19th century. The sound of her spinning wheel is said to echo in the vicinity of the chamber she inhabited, a spectral lullaby reverberating through the corridors. The question often arises, why does Hampton Court Palace brim with such supernatural stories? These tales add a layer of intrigue to the historical narrative, capturing the public's imagination and feeding their fascination with the past. They serve to humanize historical figures, transforming them from distant entities into beings with their own fears, sorrows, and yearnings. The ghostly sightings represent a link to the past, connecting the present with the dramatic episodes of history. Moreover, these spectral tales encapsulate the emotion, drama, and tragedy that have occurred within the palace's walls. Ghosts are often seen as echoes of the past, trapped in a perpetual loop of their experiences, and their alleged presence at Hampton Court Palace seems to symbolize the palace's own memory, echoing the whispers of its dramatic past. However, it is not just the spectacle of hauntings that captivates us. These tales are also part of a larger narrative about our collective past. They encourage us to explore history and remind us of the human stories that unfolded within the palace walls. These spectral tales are, in essence, narratives of passion, fear, desperation, and love, the core of human experience. As we walk the corridors of Hampton Court Palace, we tread a path between the tangible and intangible, history and myth, mortal and spectral. We feel the cold thrill of the uncanny, hear the echo of ancient whispers, and catch a glimpse of the spectral past forever embedded in the grand tapestry of Hampton Court Palace. In the realm of architectural magnificence, Hampton Court Palace stands out, featuring a splendid fusion of styles that span different eras and monarchs. Two elements, however, strike an indelible chord with those who cross the palace threshold, the Chapel Royal and the Great Hall. They stand not just as exquisite examples of architectural achievement, but also as silent chroniclers of the grandeur, religious upheavals, and regal feasts of English history. The Chapel Royal, an epitome of spiritual grandeur, holds a unique place in the palace's narrative. It was originally built by Cardinal Wolsey, and then magnificently embellished by Henry VIII. But it was under the reign of Queen Anne Boleyn, Henry's second wife and the mother of Elizabeth I, that the chapel witnessed one of its most significant transformations. To mark the birth of their daughter, Anne ordered the chapel ceiling to be lavishly decorated with exquisite motifs and gold leaf. Thus the vaulted ceiling, a riot of blue and gold, became a testament to Anne's brief but pivotal reign and a monument to a mother's love for her child. One cannot help but marvel at the grandeur of the chapel, where the light filters through the stained glass, casting an ethereal glow on the ornate carvings. But the chapel isn't just an architectural wonder, it is also steed in religious history. When Henry renounced Roman Catholicism to form the Church of England, the chapel was the stage upon which this seismic shift played out, making it a symbol of one of the most significant religious transformations in English history. In contrast to the spiritual solemnity of the chapel, the Great Hall was the heart of secular life, a stage for royal feasts and grand court gatherings. With its high, hammer-beamed roof, the Great Hall is considered one of the finest examples of Tudor architecture. The intricate stained-glass windows depicting Henry's various coats of arms fill the room with a kaleidoscope of light 
adding to the grandeur of the setting. A glance upwards reveals the mythical beasts that adorn the hammer beams, each a symbol of power and majesty watching over the royal reveries. In this grand arena, the palace's domestic dramas unfolded amidst the clatter of dishes and the hum of conversation. The grand feasts hosted here were not merely indulgences, but a vivid display of the king's wealth, designed to impress guests and assert his regal authority. It was here that the king's court gathered, feasting on exquisite dishes, enjoying the play of court jesters and becoming a part of the grand narrative of Hampton Court Palace. Thus, the Chapel Royal and the Great Hall stand as architectural embodiments of the religious and secular facets of courtly life. One represents the spiritual connection of the royals, acting as the backdrop to major religious shifts, while the other epitomizes the opulence of the royal court, a testament to the grandeur of English royalty. In these splendid spaces, we find not only awe inspiring architectural design, but also the echoes of pivotal historical moments. They stand as witnesses to the changing tides of history, each brick and stone ingrained with tales of the past, and continue to serve as vivid reminders of the palace's grand narrative. Art, in its various forms, has long been the heartbeat of royal courts, reflecting the aesthetic tastes, political ideologies, and cultural ethos of the time. At Hampton Court Palace, this narrative of art is particularly captivating, narrated through the threads of the magnificent tapestries that adorn its walls. These tapestries serve as woven diaries of the palace's past, depicting a rich amalgam of historical events, mythical scenes, and royal symbolism. Perhaps the most remarkable among these is the Abraham series, a set of ten splendid tapestries that Henry commissioned around 1540. These were not mere decorative pieces. They were powerful tools of propaganda. By choosing the biblical patriarch Abraham's life as the subject, Henry subtly drew parallels to his own, particularly his desperate quest for a male heir akin to Abraham's journey. The immense size and cost of these tapestries, the largest and most expensive set of their time, further reinforced the image of the king's wealth, power, and divine favor. Each thread, each woven figure in these tapestries tells a story about the king, his court, his kingdom, and his beliefs. The vibrant colors and intricate details serve as a visual spectacle, drawing the viewer into a narrative that transcends time. The Abraham series, with its rich imagery and symbolic content, provides a tapestry of insights into Henry's reign, reflecting his ambitions, the cultural and religious milieu of the period. As we move further into the palace, the narrative of art continues to unfold. Under the reign of William III and Mary II in the late 17th century, Hampton Court Palace underwent significant changes, embracing the more refined, lighter aesthetics of the Baroque style. This transformation is most evident in the king's apartments, adorned with works from some of the most eminent artists of the period. From Antonio Verio's grand ceiling paintings depicting the triumph of William over Catholic Europe, to grinning Gibbon's exquisite wood carvings, the palace became a canvas for the new monarch's artistic vision. Moreover, the changing aesthetics of the palace also mirrored the shifting political landscape. For instance, William's commissioning of Verio to paint scenes celebrating his victories was a clear statement of his triumph and legitimacy, just as Henry's tapestries had been. Thus, the art of Hampton Court Palace was not merely decorative. It was intrinsically tied to the power dynamics of the time, reinforcing royal ideologies and narratives. The art of Hampton Court Palace, in its many manifestations, serves as a visual chronicle of its history. Through tapestries, paintings, and sculptures, we gain a unique perspective into the lives of its royal inhabitants, their reigns, and their cultural environments. These artistic masterpieces form an integral part of the palace's rich tapestry, enhancing our understanding of its history and adding depth to its narrative. In our journey through the splendid rooms and courtyards of Hampton Court Palace, one feature continually arrests our attention. The building's fascinating architectural transitions, 
The palace, in its grandiosity, presents an enthralling fusion of architectural styles, each contributing to its unique historical narrative. Our exploration begins with the cardinal who became a kingmaker, Thomas Wolsey, a humble butcher's son who rose to become one of the most powerful men in England, originally built Hampton Court Palace in 1515. He sought to create an edifice to rival any European princes, and indeed the early Tudor design was a magnificent example of palatial architecture, reflecting his ambition and taste. However, the story of Hampton Court Palace's architecture takes a dramatic turn when Wolsey falls from grace and the palace lands in the hands of a king with grand designs of his own, Henry VIII. Inheriting the palace from Wolsey, Henry instigated massive renovations, transforming it into a monument that would proclaim his wealth, power, and majesty. The resulting blend of grand halls, opulent apartments, and extensive hunting grounds was a clear reflection of Henry's grandiose aspirations. A walk through the palace reveals Henry's penchant for the flamboyant. The great hall with its hammer, beamed roof, the chapel royal with its sumptuous ceiling, and the vast kitchens capable of serving his court of over one thousand people all resonate with his desire for magnificence. But as we wander through the red brick grandeur of the Tudor portion, we are suddenly met with a striking contrast. White, elegant, and bathed in the light of the Baroque style, William and Mary's late seventeenth-century editions stand as a testament to a new age and a new vision. Unhappy with the old-fashioned Tudor apartments, they commissioned Sir Christopher Wren, England's most renowned architect, to rebuild the palace. While not all of the plans were realized due to financial constraints and Mary's untimely death, the portions that were completed reflect a distinct transition from the hefty grandiosity of the Tudor style to the elegant refinement of the Baroque. The contrast is evident. The light, airy king's apartments with their intricate murals and mouldings, the grand vistas that open out onto meticulously designed gardens, the privy garden, Recreated in all its geometric precision, all these elements reflect the influence of European design and a marked shift in aesthetic preferences. The tale of Hampton Court Palace's architecture, however, is not merely about shifts in design and style. These transitions echo the changing tides of power, taste, and ambitions of its royal inhabitants. From Wolsey's initial grand design to Henry's flamboyant extensions, and finally, to William and Mary's elegant Baroque refashioning, the palace's architecture provides a stone and mortar narrative of England's past. Moreover, the architectural blend that characterizes Hampton Court Palace today underscores its unique historical significance. It allows us to walk in the footsteps of those who lived loved and ruled here, and experience the shifts in time as we move from one part of the palace to another. The palace's architecture is a timeline, mapping the passage of time and the evolution of a nation. As we continue our exploration of Hampton Court Palace, we step out of the towering edifice, its intricate tapestries and grand halls, and breathe in the open air of the majestic gardens that stretch out around it. These grounds are not just an extension of the palace, they are an integral part of its character, designed and redesigned over the centuries to reflect the tastes, ambitions, and ideologies of its royal inhabitants. Now let's begin with the earliest of the outdoor marvels, the great vine. Planted during the reign of Sir Capability Brown, the renowned landscape architect, this marvel is the oldest and largest grapevine in the world. It's a living testament to the ingenuity of the gardeners of the past and the fertility of these grounds. And, of course, it echoes the indulgence of the royal table, its grapes having sweetened many a royal palate. From the great vine we stroll along the broad walk a long, symmetrical pathway flanked by a magnificent explosion of colour. In spring and summer, it's a florist's dream come true, with its vibrant carpet of tulips and other bulbous plants. Originally created for William III as a parterre garden, 
It was transformed into a wilderness or naturalistic garden in the 18th century, before its current incarnation as the longest herbaceous border in the UK. We then meander into the most distinctive of all Hampton Court's gardens, the maze. Commissioned by William III, this trapezoid-shaped puzzle is the UK's oldest surviving hedge maze. It is a place of delight and frustration, as countless visitors over the centuries have discovered, but it's more than a mere garden game. In its intricate twists and turns, we see a reflection of the court's intrigues, its complex power dynamics, and labyrinthine politics. As we extricate ourselves from the maze's deceptive traps, we encounter the formal beauty of the privy garden. Reconstructed to its 1702 design, this geometric marvel reflects the shift towards order and symmetry that characterize the Baroque era. Each meticulously trimmed yew tree, each gravel path leading the eye towards classical statues and the splendid banqueting house, speaks of an age when gardens were an extension of the palace architecture, outdoor rooms where monarchs could display their cultured tastes. From the privy garden, we glimpse the sparkling waters of the long water, part of the grand baroque design. It stretches out in a perfect line towards the horizon, demonstrating mankind's dominance over nature. It's a serene spot, inviting contemplation and offering an escape from the bustle of the court. As we wander through these enchanting spaces, we also uncover the garden's rows beyond the aesthetic. They were the backdrop for opulent parties and displays of royal power. They provided medicinal herbs for the palace's apothecary. They supplied the kitchens with fruits, vegetables, and game. These gardens were an extension of the court, as entwined with its daily life and festivities as any great hall or chapel within the palace. The gardens of Hampton Court Palace, then, are not just an amalgamation of horticultural wonders. They are landscapes inscribed with history, reflecting the changing architectural styles, societal norms, and personal tastes of the monarchs who shaped them. Each lawn, each pathway, each plant tells a story, contributing to the rich tapestry that is Hampton Court Palace. As we tread the halls and corridors of Hampton Court Palace, it's impossible not to feel the weight of the centuries and the countless souls who once inhabited these grand spaces. Our first spectral encounter is with the most famous ghost of Hampton Court Palace, that of Catherine Howard, the ill-fated fifth wife of Henry VIII. Accused of adultery and treason, Catherine was arrested and allegedly broke free from the guards, running through what is now known as the Haunted Gallery, screaming for Henry's mercy. She was caught, returned to her rooms, and later executed. Many visitors claim to have heard her cries and seen her ghost running down the corridor, a heart-rending reminder of her tragic fate. Then there's the spirit of Sybil Penn, a loyal servant who nursed Elizabeth I through smallpox, only to succumb to the disease herself. She was laid to rest in the nearby church, but when it was disturbed in the nineteenth century, strange happenings began to occur at the palace. Sounds of a spinning wheel came from behind a wall, which, when removed, revealed a small forgotten chamber with an antique spinning wheel inside. Today, Sybil, fondly known as the A. Grey Lady, continues to make her presence felt. Even in death, Jane Seymour, Henry's beloved third wife and mother of his only legitimate son, Edward, remains closely linked to the palace. Her heartbroken spirit is said to appear every year on the anniversary of Edward's birth, gliding silently along the cobbled courtyard, carrying a lighted taper. But it's not all spectral sightings. There are also whispers of secret tunnels, concealed rooms, and hidden treasures. In fact, a late seventeenth-century inventory refers to a secret store of Henry's containing priceless treasures, but no trace of it has ever been found. Moreover, the tale of the silver glass witch bottle, discovered during restoration work, reveals the age-old fears of evil spirits. Believed to ward off witches, these bottles were often filled with items like hair, nails, and urine. The find paints a vivid picture of the superstitions and fears that were part and parcel of life centuries ago.
from echoing cries and spectral apparitions to bewitched bottles and hidden treasures, these legends and ghostly tales add an intriguing layer to our understanding of Hampton Court Palace. They breathe life, albeit ghostly, into the history of the palace, making the past more palpable, more human. These tales of the supernatural are not just relics of a superstitious past. They are integral threads in the tapestry of history, reflecting the hopes, fears, and mysteries of the times. As we explore these captivating tales, we are not merely indulging in ghost stories. We are delving into the social and cultural dimensions of history, providing a fuller, more rounded understanding of the palace's past. As we further explore the grandeur of Hampton Court Palace— we invite you to see through the eyes of its royal inhabitants. Each one had left their indelible mark on this grand edifice, and in doing so revealed something of their character, their ambitions, and their passion. We begin with the man who transformed a modest manor into a regal residence, King Henry VIII. His impact on the palace, like his personality, was immense and inescapable. Here he entertained lavishly, pursued his numerous wives, and made decisions that would shape the course of English history. But it wasn't all grand banquets and political intrigue. The palace also witnessed the monarch's darker moments, such as his grief over the death of Jane Seymour, his third wife and the mother of his much-desired male heir, through these contrasting experiences, we gain a deeper understanding of this complex and often controversial figure. Then we journey to the reign of Queen Mary I, whose fierce Catholic faith led to her nickname Bloody Mary. It was here at Hampton Court that she believed she was pregnant, a belief that turned out to be a phantom pregnancy, a tragic moment indeed. Elizabeth I, too, was no stranger to the palace. Known for her love of entertainment, she often held grand pageants and jousts in the palace grounds, showcasing her power and wealth. The court was a place of glamour and sophistication, but beneath the glittering surface lay a network of political intrigues and power plays. The Stuarts also left their mark on the palace. Charles I was imprisoned here during the Civil War, walking these same halls, not as a monarch but as a captive. Later, William and Mary embarked on a massive rebuilding and expansion project that reflected their desire to rival the grandeur of Versailles, a testament to their ambitions and the changing artistic tastes of the time. Finally, we explore the Georgian era. Despite the fact that the later Hanoverian kings preferred other residences, Hampton Court still played a role in their reigns. It was George II who hosted the last royal court at Hampton Court Palace, bringing to an end a vibrant chapter of the palace's history. As we walk through these grand rooms, tread these historic grounds, we are treading in the footsteps of monarchs, courtiers, and countless unnamed individuals who lived, loved, and lost within these walls. Their laughter, their whispers, their hopes, and their fears echo in these halls, creating a tapestry of human experience that is as varied as it is profound. Now let's take a reflective journey, drawing together the threads of our exploration to understand the enduring allure of Hampton Court Palace. This majestic building is more than a collection of bricks and mortar. It's a living, breathing testament to our shared past, a narrative etched in stone, a story that continues to unfold. As we draw our exploration of Hampton Court Palace to a close, we find ourselves standing once more at its entrance, looking up at the red-bricked facade, its countless windows reflecting the history we have journeyed through. We have wandered through grand halls, intricate chambers, lush gardens, and even ghostly corridors, each with a tale to tell, each echoing with the whispers of the past. Hampton Court Palace's enduring allure lies not just in its stunning architecture, its timeless gardens, or even its royal inhabitants. It lies in its capacity to connect us with a past that is both profoundly different and intriguingly familiar. This palace has witnessed the rise and fall of monarchs, the birth of nations, the creation of alliances, and the fracture of religious unity. It has heard the laughter of celebration, the murmurs of intrigue the cries of despair, and the silence of reflection. 
In the great hall, we recall the elaborate banquets, the clinking of goblets, and the swirl of dance. We feel the weight of Henry's stare from the raised dais, the hubbub of courtiers, the whispers of secrets, and the rustle of silk gowns. This hall, once a heart of royal power and spectacle, stands as a testament to a time when monarchy was absolute, when the king's word was divine law. In the haunted corridors, we touch the cool walls and feel a shiver as we remember Catherine Howard's desperate pleas, the grey lady's spinning wheel, and Jane Seymour's ghostly apparition. These spectral tales, whether you lend them credence or not, speak of a deeply human connection with the palace, a testament to the intense emotional experiences lived within these walls. In the gardens, we recall the perfume of the flower beds, the rustle of the wind in the great vine, and the delight and frustration of the maze. These outdoor spaces, too, tell their stories. They speak of a changing relationship with nature from the formal geometric grandeur of the privy garden to the wilderness of the broad walk. They tell of opulent parties, medicinal herbs, and the simple joy of a stroll on a summer's evening. This is the allure of Hampton Court Palace. It is a portal to the past, a tangible connection to the lives and loves, the triumphs and tragedies, the hopes and fears of those who walked its halls and gardens before us. But more than that, it is a reflection of ourselves, of our collective memory, of our ongoing narrative. The palace continues to evolve to tell new stories. It stands as a beacon of cultural heritage, educating, enchanting, and engaging visitors from around the world. Its future is as bright as its past is rich, as it continues to inspire, inform, and intrigue. Thank you for joining us on this journey through Hampton Court Palace. As we leave the palace, we carry with us the whispers of its past, a symphony of tales woven into the fabric of this majestic building. And as we step back into the present, we are richer for the experience, armed with a deeper understanding of our shared history, a history that continues to echo in the halls of Hampton Court Palace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Saving Castles podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll continue to explore the fascinating world of castles and chateaus. Don't miss out and subscribe to our podcast to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about us and our work, visit savingcastles.com. Thank you for listening. <laughs>